Oh, I bid farewell to the port and the land, and I paddle away from brave England's white sands to search for my long ago forgotten friends, to search for the place I hear all sailors end. As the souls of the dead fill the space of my mind, I'll search without sleeping till peace I can find. I fear not the weather, I fear not the sea. I remember the fallen, do they think of me? When their bones in the ocean forever will be. Plot a course to the night, to a place I once knew. To a place where my hope died along with my crew. So I swallow my grief and face life's final test To find promise of peace and the solace of rest As the souls of the dead fill the space of my ears Their laughter like children, their beckoning cheers My heart longs to join them, sing songs of the sea I remember the fallen, do they think of me? When their bones in the ocean forever will be. When at last before my ghostly shipmates I stand, I shed a small tear for my home upon land. Though their eyes speak of deaths filled with struggle and strife, their smiles below say I don't owe them my life. As the souls of the dead fill the space of my eyes And my boat listed over and try to capsize I'm this far from drowning, this far from the sea I remember the living, do they think of me When my bones in the ocean forever will be Now that I'm staring down at the darkest abyss I'm not sure what I want, but I don't think it's this. As my comrades call to stand fast and forge on, I make sail for the dawn till the darkness has gone. As the souls of the dead live forever in my mind, as I live all the years that they left me behind I'll stay on the shore but still gaze at the sea I remember the fallen and they think of me For our souls in the ocean together will be I remember the fallen and they think of me For our souls in the ocean Together will be. Hello, everyone. My name is Notepad, and on and I ride games for fun. So, what the hell are we doing today? Hello. I guess you just came in and ceased to exist, host 00312. I believe I've seen you before. I don't think you're a real human being. But don't worry. We're all here together in this hell. So, what are we working on today? Well, today we're going to be working on Deep Blue Girls, as we have been. Now, one thing to note, some minor things have changed. So if we go all the way up here... I've, uh, well, first things first is I actually added in two new ships. I added in the auxiliary ship, which is exactly what it says. It's an auxiliary ship. It has things, it kind of takes the same role as like a munition ship as a, and a repair ship. Rather than being either one, I kind of just made them the same thing because, um, I can do that. I also added in submarines. Uh, subs are a little bit di a little bit odd because they have this. They have dive. Uh, dive's entire thing is effectively a stealth mechanic, which you can dive under the ocean and uh, not have to worry about those things called guns. Except after a certain amount of time, you come back up. That's that's it. That's literally it. Don't know what you're expecting. They're very fragile. However, their main thing is that they want to avoid getting hit by, you know, anything. 
and they shouldn't really be getting hit by anything except pretty much the only thing that they're really susceptible to is torpedoes while they're underwater which is torpedoes are going to be the thing we're going to be worrying about today because that's not really a thing we do in, in tabletop rpgs but that's the thing we have to worry about here uh i did fix up traits a little bit pretty much each of them are like this now they you know like here here's a self trait you know kind of like what is the actually i should say description uh, kind of like here's a self trait here's what it does uh soul traits are have to be a little bit more you know detailed hence like you know all the various anti-aircraft guns you know increase the rank of ava available armor increases damage reduction by one deck increases deck size by one all these different things that you have to kind of worry about. I did add in a few new ones that I felt that were important and then I didn't realize beforehand. Uh, we have depth charges. Depth charges really only go on destroyers, even though technically they go on other things, but I needed something to make destroyers a little bit more appealing. So that's destroyers thing, they're, destroyer, they're uh, fleet destroyers. And they are pretty much, you set down a depth charge, and if there is a sub below you, or a sub nearby, they're going to explode and take a shit ton of damage. So if you know you're going up against subs, take a, take a destroyer with depth charges, because you're probably going to kill them. Uh, dive, obviously, pretty much untargetable by everything except depth charges and torpedoes, only submarines can do that, obviously. Firepower got restricted down to battleships and uh, carriers. So technically you can't have things like a destroyer with a shit ton of firepower. I was just like, how do we make these a little bit more separate, a little bit more unique? Uh, flagships do have these as well. Aircraft carriers and battleships can take flagship. All flagship does is in a radius around you, everyone inside that command radius gets a plus two, two, plus two advantage die. So pretty much plus two D6, all their checks. Doesn't seem too like, oh wow, this isn't really... That big of a deal, but if you extend it out to five, it's anything pretty much on the map is covered by your command radius because you are a flagship. However, the effect doesn't really stack, which is the big thing. Actually, what I should do is I should make that. Should I make that one? I should make that one. So it would be pretty much adjacent. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, I think that works. Yeah, command, like, I want the flagship to be like, you are a commander class. That's how I want to kind of view it as what a flagship does. You guide the other ships. Flight deck. Pretty much the only thing with the flight deck that I changed was that you can use air wings instead of just an individual ship. Individual pl plane, that is. Hangers are, going, like, the big problem with hangers is that hangers allow you to take seaplanes. There are very basic things that you can deploy as recon. That's pretty much it, except like your range, your distance. Maybe they have some bombs on them. If you want to play a seaplane tender, you take really high a hangar. If you want to play an aircraft carrier, you take flight. You know, you play an aircraft carrier. Gambler, gambler changed uh, luck changed into gambler. The only thing that is that the gacha dice margin increases on both ends. So what that means is. Your malfunction chance goes from 1 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, if you take the max ranks of it. Your crits go from 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. Those changes, it's pretty much 25% at max gambler on both sides, which is pretty nuts. And that's kind of the idea. What I wanted to get across is the idea of you are gambling every time you do that. Um, munitions Bay... Uh, pretty much, actually, where should, uh, we want to do, this is what, this is why I like going back over things, is all ship girls within a radius, radius one, gain plus two, so what we can do is radius X, gain plus two damage to AA or naval guns. If you want to play a munition ship, you are pretty much playing a mobile support. That is what auxiliary ships do. You have fuck all for guns unless you choose to take them, but you have some pretty powerful abilities. Uh, naval guns, 
Payload, I changed that to torpedoes, just alone, like torpedoes get a shit ton more damage if you take a heavy payload bonus. Radar is exactly what you think it is, it's initiative, because I feel that's kind of a thing that you should add in. And repairs. Uh, allows the use of repair action, pretty much it's you know, threshold for complexity one. You just need one hit to technically succeed to heal by one. It's, you know, endurance, you restore an X amount of endurance per hit to a damaged ship up to their full endurance. Uh, actually, wait a second. It allows to make a passion or tradition check to add. We should call this temporary. Temporary endurance. Uh, how do we want to word this? Wouldn't be... Actually, I know what we call patch endurance. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five patch endurance to hit damn ship girls up to their full amount. And what you say is here is patch endurance. Uh, he's reduced. Actually, patch endurance uh, does not carry it, does not carry over between between sorties. The damage per the damage taken persists until until repaired. Actually, until dock repair, I should say. Base repair. So, effectively, it's temporary health. Why am I doing this temporary health? Because I want to make sure that you understand that getting hit sucks, and you can't just have, like, a repair bot on, you know, standby healing you endlessly. You can't, you, if you take 20 damage, you're taking 20 damage, and you're going to have to repair that. And that's 20 steel that you may not have anymore. Uh, endurance and critical damage, exactly what... Eh, nothing really changed here. Home base. Mostly just clean things up here. Uh, to set, you know, restoration costs. Uh, submarines are a little bit cheaper than most. They're a little bit more expensive than destroyers, like, roughly speaking, but they serve the same function. Uh, we have all our different additions. That's pretty much the same, pretty normal. It's based off the pretty much the amount of times that you are able to build this. It's repeat five, or repeat, or just repeat for dorms, which just allows you to increase your ship drill capacity by ten, which I'm going to change to five because I'm evil. Wink. Uh, I'm going to have to put in a note about sprites, which are just fairies from Kantai Collection, and uh, why I need putting fairies from Kantai Collection is because I need a justification to put Kantai Collection fairies in. That's what it is. And that's what you're getting. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's... Like, right here, submarines are a little bit more expensive than destroyers, but if we go up here, they they take about a month to bring back online. I wanted to make submarines feel still impactful, but not as, like, powerful as, uh, as destroyers in their own specific niche. But... They do pretty much the same thing when it comes to convoy escort, while auxiliary ships get resource generations like aircraft carriers. Having three auxiliary ships escort things is going to produce you nothing. The most optimal amount is probably going to be like three, dis three destroyers and like an auxiliary ship, or three destroyers and a carrier. Dazzly, how that is how you optimize, you know, transporting things. Which even then, you really shouldn't be having you know, an aircraft carrier, you know, escort things, because it's a fucking aircraft carrier. So do I apparently have 83 followers? Why do I have 83 followers? Nunny? Alright, cool. Guess I have 83 followers now. Who cares? Alright. So yeah, that's how it is. So what we're doing now is call is combat effectively, and I need to sort you know kind of ascertain what they are, what these are. Uh, the two primary, actually, what I should say it's the two primary. The two primary deployments are sorties and runs. The basic idea is this is base time is non-combat. This is combat time. When you get into combat, things change. There's like a distinct twist in how things handle. You're still playing the same character. You still have the same benefits which can actually play into things. That's a good idea. It's like, hey, I'm a hobbyist, and I'm an archer, and so I can do definitely take a you know a good shot or here or something. Like, that's fine. 
Uh, dangerous task, the best of times. So, what we need to do is com is is combat operations. So put that back on. Here we go. And instead of drinking coffee like a bloody moron, I'm just drinking water today. Yeah, I just had to witness the death of a, a merchant splinter. So, combat operations. Uh, when the ship girl, when the ship girls are in, are engaged on on the seas, they have they have entered a combat operation during during which play shifts to. Play shifts to a to a basic grid to a grid actually to a grid system represent representing units representing distances that the ship girls can travel travel in and combat their and combat their enemies. Combat is dangerous and lethal is danger is dangerous. Forcing the ship girl, forcing the ship girls to think ahead and deal with and deal with the enemies as appropriate. Now, well, combat is dangerous. Forcing ship girls to th think and find the optimal, not optional, optimal outcome to each fight. How I, I actually what uh, naval naval battles are rarely to the death are rarely to the death though are rarely to the death among uh, among living crews. Often when when a ship or two or two is sunk is sunk or damaged or sunk or disabled, the opposing force will retreat. In addition, the ship girls are also encouraged to fall back if things get hairy. If things get hairy, their survival is more important is more important to the war effort war effort than anything they could get. What I'm trying to get across here is do not throw your life away. And also remember that, you know, people run away from combat. Like, combat is spooky in naval warfare. Like, combat's really, like, dangerous on the high seas. Just about any naval engagement usually isn't like, Oh, wow, look at this, like, massive naval battle going on. That's not a thing. You don't do that. How'd you get in here? Oh, Barrack. You don't... How do I want to word this? A proper actual, like, naval fight is really dangerous. Because one, like, one stray torpedo will kill you. One bad, you know, hit will detonate fuel reserves. It's almost like iron caskets in that regard, and one of the reasons why... And if uh, given time, I would probably make uh, make a ship game similar to Iron Caskets in that regard. Just the idea of that death is this very real thing and very difficult to really like find a good reason. There have been ships that have taken hell hellacious amounts of damage and have are continue to sail. There have been a few ships that take a single hit and die and then sink below the waves. 
just because that one cannon shot hit something it shouldn't have and caused a detonation somewhere or someone's bridge got hit and the captain is dead and all the command staff is dead and there's no one you know able to take command anymore it's like one bad hit like one bad hit can really send a entire operation you know an entire ship down you know hence why you get things like you know the bismarck or the hood just because they were like, oh, here's the, we're the pride of the fleet, but the pride of the fleet doesn't really mean anything if you die immediately. So, uh, so uh, their survival is more important there. So, we want to deter, uh... Initiative. When determining who, act, who acts first, the ship, girl, the ship girls and their enemies will collect, uh, will, actually the ship girls and their enemies add to, add together there, actually, uh, let me see, yeah, add together, it would be probably, we want to do passion, passion, and guts and passion, right, yeah, guts and passion, guts and passion, to make up their initiative, their initiative score, Make up their initiative. Initiative. All com all combat combat is combat is uh actually combat takes place in in descending order. Descending order of the guts uh, together their guts, passion, and speed. There we go. To make up their initiative, combat takes place in descending order of their ship. Uh, combat takes place in descending order of the ship girl's initiative. Ship girl's initiative, allowing allowing the allowing the ship girls to take two two uh, actually let me two actions may take a movement and sh allowing the ship uh, ship girls to act. If a ship girl, if a ship girl were to take critical damage, critical damage to their approaches, their initiative, their initiative will also drop, drop accordingly. So the idea here is pretty simple. You. Take this, you're getting hit, and you are going down, and bad things are going, you know, you're not going to have a fun time. Actually, what I should do, who acts, fir acts first, critical damage or initiative will also drop accordingly. If, if there is an ambush, if there is an ambush, the, uh, actually, the ambush, the ambushers, Gain a surprise round. Well, yeah, gain a surprise round, allowing them to take to all take take a full set of actions, full set of actions before calculating, leading their in their initiative. And I usually like adding this rule, even though it technically isn't quite accurate. If the if assaulting if assaulting a dedicated position a dedicated position dedicated position the defend the defenders will take a full set of actions before calculate before calculating their initiative now what this means is Pretty much, if you are assaulting a place that's already heavily defended, hi Ajax, if you're assaulting a place that's already defended, they're going to see you ahead of time and they're going to fire on you. Which is kind of one of those moments where, like, what is a, what is a defended position? That's kind of a played by ear. I usually do, like, an entrenchment line. That's why I hate things like, oh, well, I'm doing World War One or whatever, being like, yeah, World War One combat sucks. <laughs> 
because it's charge, die, and pray. Those are the three things you do in <laughs> Because you charge, and they have the advantage. They're going to see you before you see them. And they're going to open fire, and they're going to cut down your front ranks. That's the plan. That is the goal. So that's where kind of that idea comes in. It's kind of like a reverse ambush. If they know you're coming, they're, you're going to take hits before they you even know what's going on. Similar to, amb similar to ambushes, where if they don't know you're coming and you ambush them, you're going to get a free round. If neither of you kind of understand, it's like one of those things like, there's the enemy, here we are, we're engaging... That's fine. If you like, no one really is prepared. We're good. That's the plan. Think ahead. Think smart. Not <laughs> in this context, it would be like for the first one, it would be like we're ambushing you, like a dedicated like naval ambush, which is actually fairly common. And the other one would be we're charging straight into a gun line. Effectively, let's have faith and try not to get our faces fucking annihilated. Uh, because, uh, dying sucks. No. And Traders Association is officially dead. Another splinter bites the dust. I'm not surprised, though. So, let's see. Okay, we need to do... Uh, fire all guns. Fire, actually, what we'll do is... Fire all guns, action, actions, and combat. What? Actually, the ship girl... These ship girls are a dedicated... Are a dedicated fighting... Fighting force... Allowing, allowing them to, to deal with and with enemy naval presence. Uh, allowing them to deal with enemy naval pre presences, presence, with an enemy naval, enemy na naval presence. This is done by by performing actions. By performing actions. Each character, actually each, yeah, actually no, it would be each character because it would have to be both ship girls and non-ship girls, yeah. Each character is given, actually has two sets, has two sets, actually how do I want to word this? Um, actually what we'll do, well, ha has a movement and... Ah, uh, God, pretty much it's the idea is you're going to have, like, a movement action and you're going to have, like, a, quote, true action. Because the idea is your movement action is you're always going to be moving because you're a fucking boat. <laughs> no shit. You can't, like, just stop on a dime, shoot, and then keep going. No, that's not how it works. Uh, movement action and a full action. Actually, uh, yeah, we can do. Has, each character has a movement and operation, an operation action. Uh, every, every time it is their turn, the character can all. So, then we have to do movement, uh, movement action, movement actions. And a movement action. Movement action has has the character move up to their speed. Up to their speed in any direction. In direction including diagonals. I'm also using squares because squares are really easy <laughs> in this situation. Squares are probably the best, not hexes. Uh, moving action has a character move up to their speed in any direction, including the diagonals. Do I put you as a f as heading four? Yeah, we 
that the Pachu is heading for then. Actually, we have to put you down there, so heading for is really small. Let's bump you up to 14, I think. You know, update heading for a match. We need to do that to save a little bit of space. There are some fonts on Google which do this, which they, if you don't have it, they take up a lot more space than if you do bold them. So if you're ever like, wow, look, there's a huge amount of space here, bold it. It usually works to reduce space by making the font bigger. There's some things we just don't question with Google, and that, my friends, is one. All right, let's go. So we have true action, we have such speed in any direction, including diagonals. Actually, here, let's do... Now, we want to do... We'll do Control-Shift-A. We'll call this... We'll call this a base move... Yeah, base... Uh, simple. Actually, no, what we'll do is we'll call it a simple movement. Uh, the character moves up... Moves up to their speed... Beaten tiles. Actually, goddamn, I gotta put in. So we put here, and then we put in. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to put in. Uh, what would be the correct term for it? Actually, uh, charting a course. Charting a course. Charting a course, maps. Each combat operation. This combat takes place on a bat takes place on a battle on a battle map. Indicating the rough area in which the battle the battle is taking place. These are further divided. Battle is taking place. There are many different kinds, different kinds of bat battlefield the ship girls will find themselves on. on. But the most simple, the simple variety, is is like is like below. And then actually, if we go here, is we go here we want to look at our battle map a very simple battle map there we go very simple battle map because that's all we really need to worry about and we're going to do heading one so the battle the battle map is divided into three major into three major sec three major sections. Deep ocean, deep ocean, shoreline shoreline, and land. Deep o deep ocean, darker blue, is average is average terrain for all ship for all ships, allowing the ship girls move freely move freely and and use their ability and use their abilities shoreline lighter blue lighter blue as the sh as the ship gr girls reduce their speed as they reduce their speed by one speed by one but uh but full actually what I should say is full ships actually uh we'll call them true ship the true ships are unable to enter those tile enter those tile enter those tiles while ship ship girls are able to move freely 
freely. Freely, but not use their abilities. But not use certain, not use should say, certain abilities. You can't dive in the shoreline, <laughs> that's the thing. Uh, land green is land these ship these ship girls have a redu have a have a penalty of one to their speed actually uh, is land uh, sorry, land, land green has the ship girls reduce their speed to actually capitalize speed speed to one to one you just get it to one everyone's moving the same uh, but they are covered by but they are covered by the natural terrain they are covered by the natural terrain and are and are safe from being sunk Probably gonna put in a side you know, say from being sunk. Each actually, uh each ship girl girl inhabit inhabits one tile one tile square. While true ships may inhabit up 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 to five up to five in a row. There we go. This is what the basic map looks like. This is just something I whipped up real quick just to kind of get a good idea of... Hi, Varric. Just to get a good idea of, like, what a map might look like. This isn't really advanced. It's just the idea of, okay, we can move here. We're all deploying in these individual squares, and we're all moving around. Things like aircraft carriers are going to be moving to spaces for contacts, unless you have engines, which you can move up to seven, but that's investing... Five of your very limited points to move faster to die quicker destroy while well, submarines can move up to six so they can move like one let's see one two three four five six like they can move pretty quickly the problem is that they're very fragile so they actually want to dive to get into cover however they can't dive in the shallow terrain that's kind of one of their biggest issues that they're unable to do that while other ships can have these advantages, they are kind of forced to do that. While repair ships are also kind of at the mercy of, you know, being in, like, deeper ocean. So, the battles kind of change. Hello! Hello, Mecha Girls, Chico. How are you? Let's see. So, yeah, this should work in context. Now, if I really wanted to be, like, super special, I could put on more terrain features, and I might put that as, like, a side note down here, which is like, hey, here's, like, really deep ocean, or, uh, actually, we could probably do, like, here's, like, reefs, like, in deep ocean. If you go through a reef, you're just reducing your speed, so you don't really want to go in there. However, they're taking advantages or disadvantages. Now, there could also be problems such as, like, having a gun on one of these, on an island, which is aiming at you. Oh boy, new school term, my favorite. I've been hearing that quite a bit. So, okay, well, let's see. Uh, let's see, lose all their speed and tile. Actually, um... Ah... I don't like these names because I want these to be like simpler actions. Call it, I could literally just call them simple and advanced actions. That's actually not a terrible idea. The blood advanced action every time it is their turn. Uh, sim you can just do a simple movement. Actually, I'll call these simple actions. Uh, simple movement. The character moves up their speed and tiles. We can do a refocus. Add plus two to their initiative. 
for next turn because, hey, I've had initiative crash and I'm suffering. I want to be some other good ones. I want to be some other good actions that we can just do right off the bat. No, that's pretty much it. That's pretty simple actions. These are like supposed to be... Everyone will always have a simple action. You'll always have this option to do that. Oh, I know what we can do. We can do in disengage. Uh, the... Actually, the character adds... Plus two to their initiative. The character adds... Actually, the character moves away... Half their speed tiles from a target they are engaged with. It's pretty much if you're adjacent to an enemy, it's great. Uh, Daniel D. Fox is connected to Feast of Legends. Yes, I do know that. Uh, he is not directly involved, however, he pretty much got the guy who did right at the job. So that that is the story there. Uh, and he deleted the tweet, but if you, you hunt around, you'll be able to find it. It's uh, He pretty much congratulated his friend, being like, man, good job for writing Feast of Legends, it's a great RPG. And then everyone was like, hey, wait, doesn't Wendy's literally use child, like, Malaysian labor? And then they were bad. <laughs> See, this is why I... I am like I I'll I'll, I'll I've always said this, but I will write the Arby's RPG. Just give me the money, Arby's. Give me my my free Arby's a month, and I would be happy. Uh, move away half their speed and tiles from a target they are engaged with would be another good one. We can probably do. We can probably do something on land. Actually, I know what we can do. We can do a uh, hunker down. We can do hunker down. Uh, the character becomes untargetable. Uh, the character becomes untargetable if they are on land. There we go. Do we add dive as an action here? I'm I'm feeling. Actually, yes. I'm going to add dive. Dive. The character uh, performs the dive action. Dive action. Inhabiting the same tile. Inhabiting the same tile. The same tile. The same tile. But under But underwater. Um, it's not too surprising, actually, Varric. It's the thing is, it, Daniel Fox is pretty much one of the head social media guys for a massive publishing company. I mean a massive fucking company. Andrew McMeals is huge. And he knows all these people by virtue of being pretty much one of the head guys in the fucking publishing industry. And being very loud on Twitter. And he said all the right things to all the right people. And I respect the guy for one thing. He's kept his job. Uh, he's kept his job pretty well. I'd rather have an indie 5e cooking supplement than Feast of Legends. Yes, he is. Because, he, again, he knows he can get away with it. Varric, he knows he can get away with it. It's Feast of Legends is not an RPG. I don't know why people keep thinking that it's an actual RPG. It's not. It's a meme. It's a meme game Wendy's made with zero oversight because they just wanted to put out something to say they have it. Because she's like... Remember that time when, like, Wendy's was, like, the thing on Twitter and everybody loved fucking Wendy's because she was the clapback queen or whatever? Yeah, no one realizes that, like, Wendy's was pretty much, like, three guys in a social media department. Like, that's that's the clapback queen. Like, that's how those things are done. Like, it's not, like, one person. Not literally Wendy, yo, doing it. No. It was a conceited effort. And that was very much a conceited effort in an effort to 
because at that point, Arby's had this huge market when it comes to gamers. So people, so they wanted to capitalize that as well because they knew they had like a pretty big amount of people who were like, man, we love Wendy's because ha 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 and like internet culture and all that. Uh, that's why they got Critical fucking Role to play it. Yeah, remember Critical Role played it? And then immediately got canceled because it was Critical Role playing a fucking Wendy's RPG because we live in clown world. Let's see, uh, Critical Role uh, Wendy's. The Wendy controversy, that's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's this is it's one of those things you look at it, you're like, this isn't real, isn't it? Like this is this is clown town. Like we live in a clown 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 reality. <laughs> but yeah, no, Wendy's got got paid quite a bit of money. Critical role got paid quite a bit of money to do this. And they actually had to donate. Every, they had to donate everything back to, um, like we hate the we hate Wendy's fun or something. Like the Wendy's pretty much paid money to be to look good and then donated it to charity. It's great, and everybody got a tax write off. That's the funny part. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Because when it came out, I got really bored. Like, have you ever been powered by pure spite and agony? Yeah, I wrote this. Oh my god, I'm getting pinged. Hello, Varric, how are you? What do you want? Oh. Oh, the new new backup. Uh, yeah, okay, better join. Better join the new, new merchant lore. Let me add you back to Merchoslavia. But, yeah, I did, I did rewrite Feast of Legends, the clapback edition. Uh, did, was I a little bit autistic about it? Yeah. <laughs> it, it was funny, actually, when I was actually going through this in particular game. Because the guy who wrote it, obviously... Obviously knew what he was doing. I think that's the absolute worst part, is that he knew what he was doing. And because he knew what he was doing, there are actually, like, moments of brilliance inside of the game. Be like, that's pretty good. It's, like, technically, like, you don't produce stats normally. It's you roll 44 for your stats. And it's like, that's actually pretty good. Like, that's not a terrible idea. And there were a bunch of, like, little ideas that were like, man, this is actually decent if it wasn't in a fucking Wendy's RPG. <laughs> uh, hence why I've had to, uh... Yeah, did I add in, like, oh, the Baconator? And did I make every single, like, menu item on the fucking Wendy's menu? Yes. You can technically play the Wendy's RPG now. Uh, the only thing that's like that I'm actually proud of here is this. It's a cooking. It's a cooking system I made <laughs> because it was just like, oh, here's a cooking system. Like if I'm going to make this cooking system, damn straight, I'm going to make this cooking system, and I did, and it's actually not terrible. Uh, what did I get? Seventy five fucking pages out of this. Oh yeah, I had like an entire cut like adventuring system, the chicken nugget goblin. Because if we're if if we're doing chicken nugget logic, we're doing chicken nugget like logic. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't know why I took so much time to do this. Or the fact that I made like a bunch of like Dairy Queen ones, and Mc McRonald's one, like, yeah, welcome to, uh, welcome to Notepad gets really bored, this is what he does, he writes things, and funny story about this one, actually, 
is uh, during the threads when this was going on, everyone was like, wow, ha, ha, look at this. And I wrote it. Um, one guy was like, all right, Feast of Legends General. And like, let's push this one setting. He's like, oh, well, I'm working with Notepad on this. I'm like, no, you're fucking not. You've done fuck all. I'm doing this for myself. You are doing it for you. You want to use it? Go for it. I do not care about you, and I am not working with you. <laughs> Watching that man's entire life collapse around him in three seconds was mwah. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not working with you. Uh, let's see. Uh, disengage. Dive. Hunker down. We should be good there, and then we get to move into advanced actions. This is where things get a little bit more complicated. So, we need to fire, uh, fire guns. The character chooses a number of guns. Chooses a number of guns within range. And makes a, makes an attack. Makes an attack check. How do I want to do attacks, actually? <laughs> I've been delaying on this to give you a, a, a nasty little example. I've been delaying on actually how to do like a basic attack. So most likely, it'll. I would say it's going to be either Tradition slash Guts. It's going to obviously be your attack traits. Attack traits. Plus, you know, bonuses versus now we can either do this opposed or we can do this I don't know, how do we want to do this see we can do this opposed or we can do this bra this raw like you're just doing in a basic raw attack both of which have an advantage and both of which have downsides so what we can probably do is Base it off range, maybe? No, we need to accommodate this. So... Do we add in, like, a defense score? Nah, that's not right, either. Because if we scroll up a bit... Characters don't actually have like any like defensive thing outside their approaches, but let's see: speed, endurance, tonnage, deck. Mm. Yeah, let's actually do. No, actually, we want to do rogue traders, uh, ship combat. Start. See, the issue is that it's such a broad... You joke. <laughs> However, if we really want to... Because what we need to... What the, what the main issue, what we're dealing with right now, is if someone is in one location, and we're making a shot at them, should it be... Difficult to hit. Maybe we base it off of range and accuracy. Like accuracy of the actual... Mm. Mm. I 
I can see it working. Like, that's the thing. I can see it in my head, but this is just something that's never been addressed. So, let's actually do a quick check here, or else, real fast. We want to go to Canton Collection, attack, like, attack calculations. Combat damage calculations. This is where things get, like, really, really fucked. So, this is the main formula. Let's say, what's just the basic ability to hit? Night attack, cruiser, post cap modifiers. Airstrike formula. So, it would be like a two hit modif- like anti collection. Two hit modif- two hits. Because it's like, the complicated thing is that in a vast majority of these games, what it usually is, is value X, is value versus value, and you just blow the shit out of the enemy one way or another. You're doing consistent damage either side, but I need to be able to make a method to allow people to take a shot and hit them. So, check trait plus bonuses... For speed. That doesn't seem right. Unless we assign like an arbitrary value. Like just to hit them is hard. <laughs> Trying to think. Hmm. Uh. Like, this isn't a thing that's ever covered, so it's like, how do you do this correctly? And the answer is, you don't do it correctly, because there isn't really a right way. Because the only other, like, thing to base it off of is fucking Crosswave. And Crosswave sucks. Like, let me, let me reiterate. Like, Crosswave fucking sucks. Because Crosswave, let me just, is like, nothing occurs. Because you literally glide around and you, like, shoot. There's, like, no strategy or anything. So, if we... How do we want to do that? Okay. Alright, alright, alright. Prisoner of Gods, and the goal is to hit a, hit a target... Hit a target number on the gun itself. I think that moving makes you harder to hit, and you can't aim for anything. That's where things get complicated, because if we go purely off of, like, like a movement value, like, maybe, like, 5 minus, no, it wouldn't be 5, because if we do 5, you can't hit subs, because they, they have a speed of 5. So maybe it's, uh, God, what would be the proper calculate, the proper calc for it? 
I'm, I can see it, I can see this, this is like, this is going to be a gap, like, I knew this was going to happen, I've been delaying it, I've not, like, it's going to work just fine when I get to it, it's not, so attack traits plus bonus plus verse speed, we do, like, a verse target number, a verse target number, with, did, actually, we can do, like, a distance target number, that could work, Look at how you calculate the distance there, because it's not a raw value, it'd be hits. It'd be the number of hits. Or. The other option is to pull a real gamer move. And make it guaranteed results. A like guaranteed action could also work. Like if you if you are in range, like just bear in mind if you are in range, you roll and calculate hits. Yeah, you roll and calculate hits. So let's say let's get some of my dice out here real fast. Uh, let's see, we got D8, let's just do D8, it's because D8 got plenty of D8s around here right now. There we go, we'll do, we'll do some D8s. Oh, God damn it. Hide up my... Back, my dice back here. I tied the strings on accident. Oh no! I've made a mistake. Why are you the way that you are, Notepad? Idle hands are the devil's work. So, let's just do... Let's say, if you are within range, you roll and calculate hit. Maybe by the complexity of the gun? But then how do you read the complexity of the gun? This is where things were going to get hard. I damn well knew this was going to happen. Because if we, like, for example, let's say we have a target number of four. Like, that's going to be our, our guns thing is four within range X. We are just... So that is one, two, three, four hits. You got four hits... I would do that many, I would get that many actual attacks on the enemy. I mean, it would work technically. You roll and cal- uh, If you are within range, you roll and calculate hits. Uh, number of hits. Number of hits equals damage. Unless we tie the damage based entirely as raw numbers rather than randomized, but I think that could work should work for randomized numbers. I mean, it's one of the complicated things is as well, because if we Cause this is where things get like really uh, like Oh God, oh fuck, oh God. See, now this is the arcade version. This is Kantai Collection Arcade. Right here, what you're, what you're seeing in front of me is Kantai Collection Arcade. Now, what this is, you'd be like, oh wow, it's a fucking giant ship. No, this is literally all it is. It's just, here's your front fleet, here's your back fleet. You are within engagement range things are happening, and then it's like all of this like very guaranteed action, be like, oh, you evaded, like, what do you mean by evading? How do you evade? Like, is that like an oppose check, maybe? That could... That could be a option. We could do like an oppose check. Now you roll to calculate hits, number of hits versus the random, you know... Okay, actually, I know what we can do. Alright. Bear with me. 
So, if guns are in range, you know, guns are in range, you, you roll, if guns are in range, roll, and calculate hits. Calcule, and calculate hits. Yeah, it's, the, the complicated thing with Azur Lane is that, like, Azur Lane is, like, it's a tapping game at the end of the day. It's, like, tack this, attack this, tack this. Like, the game, if, like, playing the game itself on your phone is a little bit more engaging, dare I say. So, guns are in range, we roll to calculate hits. So we can either and then what would be is hits equal damage is equal damage. So let's say for example, we're within range, our target number is four. Maybe actually we can base it off of the range of the gun and then the guns itself to determine what the kind of the target number is. That doesn't work. Because what happens if you're shooting off one set of guns or another set of guns, unless you just don't? Like, they, they handle this in the actual, like, tabletop RPG by virtue of, unless we just say... Unless I just say, you can only shoot off one type of gun. You can shoot off your big gun, like, the same type of gun. You can shoot off your, both of your big guns, or shoot off your little guns. Unless I want to do, like, shoot off heavies, then shoot off lights, but then how much damp, then how do you calculate that? How do you calculate that? Fuck. I reference the hood a lot. Yeah, I reference the hood a lot because she's like probably like the most simple design of all of them. Because just like we have four four main guns, unless we want to tie each gun to that. But like, what do you do with these smaller guns? Are they just completely separate? Are they different things? Are they? Do you account for? Do you account for all the guns, or do you account for only the major guns? If you account for the major guns, how do you how do you have to deal with the fact that there are multiple? You might have multiple guns because a lot of ships, a lot of ships have like two main guns and then like three minor guns. Like, do you just all of these might be different? So you might have like your main guns might be. You know, a 40 centimeter and a, you know, 28, 28 centimeter. And your minor guns might be like two times 12 centimeters. Something like that. Like, do you calculate each differently or do you calculate them the same? Because there isn't really a good answer for that. And most games don't handle that because that's really fucking stupid to deal with. Case in point, so, okay, actually, roll to calculate hits. Unless we just say fuck it. Unless we just say fuck it, and then, like, put... You can shoot your heavy, your media, your me your meds, your, your heavies, your mediums, or your lights. Those are your three options. You are going to shoot heavies, you're going to shoot mediums, you're going to shoot lights. If you have multiple different kinds of guns, you have to kind of, like, assign hits per gun. Which is going to be another factor I have to deal with. So, like, certain guns can only, like, technically get, like...
So you might be rolling a lot of dot. You might be rolling a lot of dice, but you're only going to get a certain amount of hits per dot, hits per gun. So if you want to do that, how do you do that then? Unless we do like dice. Now that's an option. That is definitely an option. So if let's say we score a few hits, which is really right now I, sc I scored literally zero hits on this Let let's say I scored two hits two hits on one die I can assign that to one of my guns and that's going to hit that many times so higher higher tier higher player higher power level characters are going to be able to assign different amounts of hits to different guns so it's like the idea of like I'm shooting off three guns if I roll three hits I can assign that to there I can assign one, two, three, rather than just having to assign it one direction. So you're encouraged to have more guns, but then it's... That doesn't work. Either. Don't give up the ship. 1972. Yep, this is the shit I'm working on. Uh, fleet action imminent out of print man of war. Classic uh, Star Trek Starship Cat. Fucking Battlefleet Gothic has to be. You know, I gotta worry about Battlefleet Gothic. Maybe like Victory at Sea Battlefleet. Fucking Battlefleet Gothic. Or full thrust. Okay, maybe full thrust has something. Oh of course. <laughs> Ninety two. Awesome. No date has been set. Awesome. Fuck. <laughs> I am working with nothing here. Oh God! Uh, actually, let's let's check Battlefleet Gothic. Um, gun. Let's just do rules. Let's just let's just do basic rules. Give me what I'm looking for. Battlefleet Gothic. Maybe this will. Battlefleet. Shooting. Okay. Okay. That's shooting. We want the shooting rules. Okay. Total firepower half when special orders that affect weapon capital ships have halved individually. What? Uh, gunnery table.
and I knew this was going to get complicated really fucking fast, because I knew it was going to get complicated because there's a fucking BFG game. All I want to know, all I want to know is how I shoot my fucking guns. It's all, it's all Notepad wants to know. All Notepad wants to know is how do I shoot my guns? Okay, we got to go to page 18. Movement phase. Okay, we've, we've moved. Fire the shooting phase. All right, all right, boys. Let's let's do it. So, choose a ship to fire. Target within range. His weapons fire arcs at target. Resolve firing. Okay, we've got our ranges. Firing arc. Okay, we don't gotta worry about ranges. That's easy. Shoot more than one. Uh, some weapon systems can shoot more than once. Multiple targets. Directing fire. Lances. Weapons. Batteries. Give me one second. I need to. I need. I need to collect my thoughts on this, which is um. Pardon my French. Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Why did I agree to do this game? <laughs> All right. Okay. No. No. We're taking it. We're taking it back. We're, we're. We're doing this. All right, boys. Let's. Let's think about this at a completely logical point of view. Guns are in range. We roll to calculate hits. Our hits equal our dam equal what damage we're rolling. If we score four hits, we're doing four fucking damage. If we score four hits, we're going to be rolling our guns damage dice on that. What are our guns damage dice? We can roll up to our guns damage dice, obviously. So hits equal uh, damage rolled, and then we're going to need to do maybe okay. Unless we give everyone a defensive action. Actually, yeah, we can do that, actually. That wouldn't be a terrible idea that all ship girls can make a defensive action. Yeah, okay. Number of gun uh choose the number of guns within range and makes an and makes an attack check. Dealing uh dealing damage based on the number of hits scored. So what it would be. This is the basics of it. We have four heavy guns. Let's just let's just do an example. We have two heavy guns. Both do one d. Let, let, let let's be concerned. Let's say say do both of them do two d twelve damage. And we can say that we have two heavy guns that do two d twelve damage each. So what we need to do is we need to roll and calculate our hits. Uh, what's going to be our range? Well, our range on these guns, we are within range. We are within range. It's going to be, I don't know, threshold three. Threshold, no, let's do threshold six. No, threshold five. Complexity one. I'm going to roll. I'm like, okay, I'm rolling my dice. Rolled my dice. I scored one, two, three, four hits. I scored four of my hits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so I've got that, I'm going to hit with both of my guns, guaranteed. I'm going to, I can technically assign at least two of my hits there. I have two more in reserve. Alright, we're, we're getting somewhere. Otherwise known as the more guns we get, the more we're allowed to do. So we need to give people a defensive action. So, uh, dealing damage based on the number of hits scored. Scored uh, a target. A uh, target makes a def makes a defensive check of their choice. So the idea of the defensive check is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be yeah, these guns. The defensive check is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be like, okay, I've scored four hits with my two guns. I'm going to do 4d12 damage to you. 
unless you can do something about it. I'm like, okay, this is bad. I'm in danger. So I'm going to take that, and you can probably... What are going to be our defensive actions? Okay, so our defensive actions could probably be something like... Uh, we can do Brace. Brace is a defensive action, which is just going to plant flat, remove, remove damage. Yeah, we can use Brace as a mitigation of damage. Which, that is you taking it on the fucking face. And we can do a dodge action. Only ship girls can do the dodge action. Which is going to be roll to avoid getting hit. So we would be able to say, okay... They rolled that. We're going to try to avoid that. We roll. Being like, okay, I scored one. I scored one success. Technically, they still have three successes. They can still assign two dice to it. I'm still going to get fucked. That doesn't sound right either. God, son of a fuck. Unless we just do like one bat, uh, chooses a number, uh, actually a number of guns in the same class. Class within range makes an attack check dealing damage, but uh, attack is based on the armament. Based on the armaments, dealing damage based on the number of hits scored. Target makes a defensive check of their choice. Uh, we can do engage. Engage is a melee combat with an adjacent target. This is why... This is maddening, by the way. I want y'all to remember that. This is fucking maddening. When you can see it, you can see it up here, but you can't understand where how to do it properly. Majorly, uh, melee target with an adjacent, with an adjacent target. Uh, they will roll. They will roll a a guts check. A guts check. Threshold. So we don't want lower power level enemies. We don't want lower power level characters to engage in that. However, we still want we want the guns to be consistent and be able to hit. However, none of the games actually support that because naval combat isn't actually about doing that. It's about shooting things. Or more accurately, it's about sending fucking planes to shoot things because that's what naval combat's all about and we don't really have to deal with any of these things because we live in goddamn clown town. Good God. Okay, so let's just... Let's just get some basic things down. We want to do fire guns. We want to do engage. Just basic. Uh, just basic. I want to punch you in the face because I have a sword and you don't. Uh, we also want to have a actually launch, uh, launch air wings, launch torpedoes. And then deploy depth charges. Deploy depth charges. And then we want to do a, we want to do another move, another movement, which is going to be simple. This moves up to their speed in tiles. If you want to haul ass, you do a simple action and an advanced action just to move. Uh, moves up to their speed in tiles. Okay, engage, launch air wings, launch torpedoes, deploy depth charges, movement. Uh, actually, do we want to do... Do we want to make AA passive or do we want to make AA dedicated? Actually, we can do a dedicated AA. Uh, AA, um, AA, AA fire. Actually, fire AA guns. This should be fire naval guns. Now, alternatively, alternatively, this is an option here. 
we don't actually count them as separate guns. That is an option. You're just pretty much, you have like a single heavy gun, but it's doing, so your two heavy guns would be shot at once, but you would just be doing 2d12 or like a d12 or 2d12 or whatever as damage for every hit. 2d12 for every hit? Ugh. And that seems like a lot of fucking damage. Fire A guns. So we have fire our naval guns, we have engaging, we have launching our air wings, launching our torpedoes, deploying our depth charges, we have basic movement again, and we have firing our AA guns. Cool. Alright, give me one second, I need to use the gentleman's room. <laughs> Hello, I'm, I'm alive. So, let's see if we want to workshop this a little bit more. So, here's the thing. This is going to be very complicated for a variety of reasons. So, let's keep all of this. So, what we can do is we can add in a, effectively an impromptu defensive score which we can base off tonnage with rain, you know, tonnage is base to hit. Base to hit, so making sure that like aircraft carriers are easier to hit because they're just bigger and have more stuff on them. But uh, that also doesn't work, fun fact, because that's just you're all fucking girls on a you're all fucking girls on boats and all the boats are going about the same speed because it's fucking Azure Lane or it's fucking Can Kantai Collection and you can't really use the idea of size because everyone's an anime girl the same fucking size. Everyone is a fucking 5'2 anime girl who weighs a hundred and who weighs about 110 pounds. Fuck fuck shit cock damn it. Okay. We use maybe like what we can do is we can have like a base to hit somewhere. If you are within range, you're gonna be doing that. Maybe I tie the threshold to various different kinds of ships, so like destroyers. Unless we tie it to speed. 
tie things to speed, make that the threshold. That's where things get caught, like, it's... But the, the main issue is that they're all taking up roughly the same space. They're all going to be taking up one unit. The, you know, Enterprise Chan does not take up five units because she is a big, thick girl. No, she's taking up one unit. You can be a lolly or you can be a milf. You're going to take up the same amount of space, roughly. Because you also need to account for the fact that there will be literal boats. Like, that's the... That's the issue. If I was dealing with actual ships, I could do that. I'm not dealing with actual ships, though. Like, that's where it's like, okay, like, that doesn't work. So, if we base it off the speed, though, and then make it, like, speed. Maybe we do, like, speed divided by two. So that would, or speed divided by two rounded down. So that would make, pretty much submarines would have a TN of three. Like, you need to hit a three or higher on the threshold, but that's too high because... Unless we make the threshold smaller, but how do we do, the, how do we shrink the threshold to be more satisfying? Because if we don't do that, aircraft carriers will get hit by literally everything. Because they would, their speed is two. If you are within a range of an aircraft carrier, you will be getting hit. So if we double check the speed. So if we do the, if we round it by a half, actually, if we keep like threshold basic, we say like threshold to hit, you know, T to, you know, to hit equal your speed. It would be a uh, CVs would be equal, you know, pretty much target number two it'd be t2c1 ags would be with a speed of how much speed speed of four would be t4c1 so you need a four higher to hit that so this battleships would be bbs equal t4 t4c1 Cruisers would be CR. CR, since you would do what half rounded down, it'd be 1.5 rounded down to, so it would be T, T2. Actually, no, it'd be T3, T3, C1, because we're not rounding down. Then BDs would be T5, T5, C1. Subs, subs would be the complicated ones. Subs would be literally T6, C1. Unless you are able to hit, but if you're able to hit... Yeah, it... In this situation, I don't think making a D100 system would make sense. Just because you wouldn't be able to implement the power level system as nearly as easily as with this, as this, with this current system, but... I'm gonna hit a battleship. I'm gonna hit a battleship with my guns. I rolled a six. An eight. That is an eight. I rolled a six, eight, and a six. I've got three hits. If we combine our guns to be one thing, we're gonna be rolling that. We scored three hits. So if we do the number of guns by flat amount. So if we combine all the guns together, if we just hit them with a with a heavy gun, it would be one d twelve plus whatever the damage. plus one d twelve plus the number of guns, or bonus guns maybe. But you're going to be rolling to do that. So like, oh no, I'm going to hit them with my heavy guns. I only have two heavy guns though because they're big ass motherfuckers. So let me get out some d twelves. Come on, where's D12. Why do I never have any D12s when I need them? There we go. Let's say I have two heavy guns, so it's going to be D12 plus two. Let's say, yeah, D12 plus two. And I scored three hits, so it's one plus nine, so ten. 
12, 7. 10, 12, 7, so that's 29. 29 health against a battleship, which is... Not death, but very close. That is almost half your health in the one volley with heavy guns. With three hits, though. So you don't want to get hit. So you need a method to... Unless we had a defensive action. That wouldn't be a terrible idea, honestly. I don't think... It's, uh... See, we have a few options here. Uh, like, on one hand, we could add, like, a defensive option. Like, that's just, like, a pure third set of action, which is just defensive actions. If you get hit, you can do one of these things. If you're getting attacked by, like, that, you can either choose to brace, which would be a guts check. Which would be, like, guts plus, you know, guts with an armor check. Yeah, actually, it'd be guts plus uh, it'd be guts with armor plus durability, with your hits just reducing damage. You can try to do a dodge check, which would be a tradition check, and that would be all about your engine plus you know movement related activities. Or if you score more than their success by two, this would be. Equal reduced damage. But how do you calculate how do you calculate the threshold at that point? Unless we do like an opposition check. No, an opposition check wouldn't be correct though. So if we do dodge Dodge would just be reduce reduce hits. Actually, if we just do pure reduce hits. Yeah, if we just do like reducing hits, like straight out. So if I score four hits against you. But you can only do it once, so you're always encouraged. You can only have one defensive action a turn effect, a round effectively, so if you only do it once, if you get hit by multiple things, you're going to take damage. And you kind of want to start, then at that point, you want to start doing defensive actions to try to mitigate damage. Mitigate successes, so you take that first hit right on the chin, and then you start improvising from there. Maybe... That doesn't seem correct. That doesn't seem correct at all. That's not the right answer, no head. He damn well know that's not the right answer. But yet here we are debating on the finer points. But let's just do this for now. Like right now, like what we have, we need to worry about this. We just need we're just gonna use that as our basic you know, to hit is going to be their speed. So, fire naval guns chooses a number of gun uh, chooses guns of the uh, actually. In the same class, then within range. And makes an attack, and makes an attack check. Damage is is calc. Damage is calculated by the number of hits scored. What we can probably do is we can do light guns. Maybe do like D four damage, like D D six. Like light do a D. Unless we tone down, like, the guns to make it do something like this. And then have, have the eye, like, the heavier mounted guns be able to, like, bump up some dice levels. Bump up range. 
for the off chance of doing more damage versus just rolling like 48 damage against someone. Because I, I want people to take damage, but I don't want them to immediately explode the second they take any damage. Because getting hit with heavy guns as an auxiliary ship, that was instant death. Like, you just died. <laughs> but, do you really want to be taking damage as an auxiliary ship? No, why would you? That's a death sentence. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to put in actually a table right here. And I'm going to say to hit equal speed just as a, as a stopgap. So, launch air wings, uh, the character, a num launches an air wing, and air launches an air wing, toward a designated target, they will, uh, they will move toward a designated target, designated target to, uh, to engage, engage and then with air wings do I want to do no I want to keep air wings pretty simple so uh, the character launches a so actually launch launch plane launches a plane launches a plane a, a plane or air wing of their choice uh, launches a torpedo, which will will travel in a line. Which will travel in which will travel in a line up to its speed every every turn every turn for its uh, we'll call it lifespan. It doesn't hit a target within a certain amount of time it's missed it's going to fizzle out it's going to collapse at the bottom of the sea so uh the character drops a depth charge depth charge on their look on their location if a submarine is below them they take instant damage Uh, they take instant damage if a submarine if a submarine moves on a location moves on a tile with a depth charge with a depth charge they take uh, with a depth charge while all submerged they will take damage pretty much you're limiting options with submarines if you're doing this however it is indiscriminate i just have to put that down so fire a gay guns uh, the character fires all AA guns on air on air we, on planes or air wings planes or air wings doing uh, actually we can do making an attack check damage is calculated by the number of hits scored. These ones are actually, like, relatively simple. Because it's... Torpedoes are going to move in a straight line. If they impact you, you're fucked. You're taking damage. Depth charges. You're going to drop a depth charge on the current tile you're at. If there is a submarine under you, they're going to take damage. If there is no submarine under you, if they move on that tile while dived, they're going to take damage. AA guns. You're going to roll and you're going to deal that much damage with your AA gun to planes. Planes have a set amount, you know, air wings have a set amount of health. Once they hit zero, they're blown out of the sky. Naval guns are the only complicated ones. <laughs> Unless I want to, like... Unless I do a set damage. Unless I do set damage. That is entirely an option. Because if I do set damage, what it'll be is what I'll do is I'll fucking yeet my my dice over here. So let's say I'm targeting an aircraft carrier. Well, actually, let's say we're targeting a, an auxiliary ship, a TN4. I score two successes. 
if I have two guns with, who are doing combined, like, two guns that do three damage, it do six damage, I roll two successes, they take 12 damage if they are within range. That is the easiest method. Uh, it's guaranteed, I think guaranteed action is the right way to go. I honestly think guaranteed action is the right way. Roll damage, I'm like, hi, half of me wants to do roll damage, the other half of me is like, no, Pat, that's the wrong fucking way thing to do. Unless, unless I add, like, another action to things, but, but, bear with me here. Let's say you do take that six, let's, let's say again, you're taking six damage. You have a pull dice, which you can roll and mitigate that much damage. Which inherently makes it a little bit more valuable. So if we do set variable... Yeah, I think that's the right way. That's I think that's the right thing to do. I want to do randomized damage, but I cannot think of a good way to do randomized damage unless uh, because but you can still tie it to pull that like pull dice. So you do six and you have a d12. Just roll a fucking d12 and add it to it because you just do that much more damage. All right. I think that's the only way I can really. I think that is literally the only way I can do this reliably. Yeah, I think that's really the only way I can do it reliably. I don't think I can do it another way. In theory, what you should be able to do is you're going to get your guns, you're going to say all of my heavy guns are going to shoot like this, and what we can do is base off the... When, it come, when we get to the armament section... Actually, what we can do is, when we get to the armament section, your your basic guns are going to have a set value. They're going to have, like, just a set value of damage, and maybe for, like, higher tier guns, like one of the higher tier variety of guns, you can add, like, kind of like a randomizer factor. Like, oh, I'm doing 3 plus D4 damage, or it's like 3 plus D6 damage. If I score, like, if I get, like, Four fucking hits, I'm going to be doing 12 plus 46 damage because it's a higher tier fucking gun, and that's insane. Or, like, the really high tier stuff would be that, so, like, 12 plus uh, 6, so that would be, we're at uh, 18, 22, 30, 33, like, but that's, like, a really expensive fucking gun. And if I only have that, I might be only doing... Three daily. I might be only able to afford a single gun. How do you deal with that, though? Having multiple... How do you deal with having multiple guns?
yeah, there you go. I think I just have to abstract it now. I honestly think I just have to abstract everything out. Fuck. Okay, I can do that. I can do that. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. All right. All righty then. Okay, so I think I have a good idea of what I need to do. So we have all our actions in combat. We have to. We have how to determine maps. We have initiative. And hunker down becomes untargetable if they are on land. We can probably add in another simple action. Yeah, let's add in another simple action. We're going to call this brace. And the character reduces damage by half. Uh, damage by half for the round. So pretty much if you just hunker down, you're going to take less damage by virtue of just being able to take a little bit more damage. Obviously, lighter ships don't want to do that because they're going to get fucking annihilated. And actually, we can do the dodge action. Actually, reduce it. Actually, it okay, moves up to half their speed, speed and tiles. Reduce it. Uh, redu uh, reducing all successes. Actually, all hits against them. And by half. All right. So full movement, you can move up your tiles. However, you're probably going to be wanting doing dodges. Aircraft carriers don't want to dodge because your fucking movement's two. Like, you're going to be reducing it by one. It's not going to be very useful. You want to be moving. You want to get under. You want to have help. However, the submarines also don't want to do this because submarines are going to be, you know, diving. And that's what you want to do as a submarine. You want to dive. You want to get behind them. And you want to start messing them up. Aircraft carriers and battles like air any pretty much any character that is moving slower you want to brace like that's what you want to do fast characters want to dodge yeah lose half their speed and tiles yeah lose up their their speed and tiles reducing all hits against them by half uh, we can do rounded up actually because if we do this. Destroyers moving at five will be able to mitigate three hits against them. So that would be if we roll all our dice. That'd be eight, six, seven, five. And against destroyers, that all of those would be hits. Take away three of them, so it would only be one hit. Or it'd be like one or two hits. I think that's it. And that's gonna probably be able to prevent you from dying. What's gonna prevent people from dodging and what do you do if you want to stop people from dodging endlessly? Engage with them. I think that would be the correct option. Because if you heavily engage... Actually, I'm, I'm reducing all hits against them by rat. Actually, we can do reducing the next... The next set of hits against them by half rounded up. So, if you see people dodging around all the time, you focus fire, because they won't be able to dodge everything. That should work. I should say taken damage by five. So by half. So the idea there for brace. Let's say I take ten damage. I have five armor. I take five. I would only take uh, take half uh, by rounded up for the round. So if I take ten damage, I have five armor. I'd have five. I would reduce it by half to three. So bracing with heavy armor isn't actually even that useful because you just are going to be able to, you're not going to be getting that much of a benefit out of it. You're going to be what, mitigating two damage. Oh no, you don't have armor. You want to brace, but if you are doing that, you probably want to do something else. Okay. So we have engage. Yeah. Engage in melee combat with actually 
unless we do something with this. We can do something with this, actually. Let's change, the, let's change the engagement rules a little bit. So, what we want to do engage the character in engages with a character with a target within three within three tiles of them. So they cannot they cannot dodge or brace. They cannot dodge or brace. No, that's not. No, no, no. We just want. We want to keep things. Uh, they will. Uh, they will roll a guts check with, with speed. Uh, they roll a guts check to, uh, guts check to attack. If I'm running up to you, I'm. If I charge up right ahead of you, if I'm within range, I'm going to start wanting to engage in melee combat with you. If I engage in melee combat, no one's shooting guns. So, uh, neither, uh, neither side can fire guns. Actually, neither side can engage in, cannot, cannot use any other actions. Actions except engage or disengage. We move disengage here. Uh, use any other advanced actions. Cannot if engaged. Cannot if engaged. Untargetable by ranged attacks, we'll see. Okay. So what this should be able to let us do is certain actions are just going to become very hard if you are engaged. Actually, should a character be able to dive if they are engaged? I don't think so. If you are a submarine and you get caught out and you get engaged in like full on combat, you're just fucked. You you aren't diving. But we can probably add in for true ship something special here. We can probably have like an engagement range, which is like if you are within X amount of space of these things, you are technically considered to be engaged just because you are that fucking close. Okay. Uh, submarine takes instant damage. All right. Okay. So I think that's where we're, we're going to leave it off there for today. What I'm going to do. Today, the rest of this today and tomorrow, is I am going to clean this up. I'm going to make this as pretty as possible. I'm going to put in a lot of, like, side rules and exceptions and things like down here. Just to make sure everything works the way it should. Once everything works the way it should, what we could be able to do is... Uh, let me see. What I'll also probably do in the meantime is I will write this section just by myself. So, these should. I'm going to clean up sorties today. I'm going to clean. I write this section. This section isn't going to be very long. This is pretty much going to be like a pseudo GM section, which is going to be. Uh, mission is. Mission is a big part of a season. There are multiple missions per season, and then you have the upkeep phase, which is everyone gets upkeep up, up kept. A season is like a mini campaign inside of a campaign. Must uh, seasons going to uh, season? I should also call those operations. However, operations have their own thing. You know, there are going to be a com combination of certain missions, and then which is going to lead to upkeep. Then we're going to be doing armaments on Friday. Once armaments are done, we're done, and we never have to think about this entire fucking game again. All right. So, thank you all for watching. My name is Notepad, and I hope you all had a wonderful rest of your day. And watch me suffer trying to figure out naval combat. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. 
And uh, catch y'all on the flip side. If you ever have any questions, you know where to find me. I am 